Okay, so the topic of this video is the different forms that DNA can be found within, chromatin versus chromatids versus chromosomes. So chromosomes, chromatids, chromatin, what do they all have in common? Well, they're all forms of this. This is a molecule of DNA. They're all forms of DNA, the double helix, uh, twisted spiral ladder that uh, you've probably heard before. But each of these forms of DNA, they exist at a different stage in the life of a cell. So let's kind of break it down and we'll compare and contrast. Well, first of all, this picture is called a karyotype. And it is a picture of a person's individual set of chromosomes. And so these chromosomes were taken from the inside of a person's cell. So here's a cell. All of these chromosomes, those black fuzzy objects that you see, all of those chromosomes were at one time contained within the nucleus of a cell. A human should possess 46 total chromosomes. Like there's one chromosome right there, two chromosomes, three chromosomes, four chromosomes, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. You know, I counted them out individually. There's a faster way, of course, to figure out 46 chromosomes. I think if you notice, there are 23 pairs pairs of chromosomes and pairs always come in two so 23 pairs would be the same as 46 total chromosomes now why do we have 46 chromosomes well we receive 23 of them from our mother and then therefore the other 23 chromosomes we've re received and inherited from our father so we are half mom and half dad now, let's zoom on in. See the blinking box right there around one of the chromosome number ones? Let's zoom on in for a closer look. And when we zoom on in, we can see that this is a chromosome. Each chromosome contains two halves. Notice there's the left half blinking in yellow and there's the right half blinking in green. The two halves of a chromosome are called chromatids. Uh, notice they're kind of combined in the middle area right there, that location where they, where they unite together. This is known as the centromere of a chromosome. But one chromosome possesses two chromatids. So if we come back to this chromosome versus chromatid versus chromatin, what do chromosomes, chromatids, and chromatin, what do they all have in common? As we said earlier, they are all forms of this. They're all forms of DNA that exist at a different stage in the life of a cell. So here's the karyotype that we just described. Chromosomes are only visible for a short time during cell division when cells do either mitosis or meiosis. Chromosomes are tightly coiled, movable packages of a person's DNA. So uh, we'll go into tightly coiled in, in just a moment. But the purpose of a chromosome is to put the DNA of a cell, put the person's DNA into a unit that is more movable. So when the cell goes through mitosis and meiosis, it can easily move its DNA as the cell divides. All right, here's a chromosome, as we mentioned earlier. What are the chromatids? Well, the chromatids are the two identical halves of a chromosome. Sometimes you'll hear the chromatids, sometimes you'll hear them called sisters, sister chromatids, the one on the left, the one on the right. They're identical, and what do I mean by that? If you were to compare the A's and T's and C's and G's of the left chromatid, Compare the A's and T's and C's and G's of the right chromatid. Compare the sequence. They should be identical. Each chromatid contains a duplicate copy of the genetic material. And the reason for this is when cells divide, they go through mitosis, each cell, one cell becomes two, but the two cells will each receive one of the copies of the chromatids. 
Well, so let's again just review that the chromatids are tightly coiled DNA, A's, T's, C's, and G's. And so I'm going to draw the left chromatid as this curling red squiggly line. What about the right chromatid? It also is tightly coiled DNA, the exact same A's, T's, C's, and G's. And I'm going to draw it as this tightly coiled blue squiggly line. Now I'm going to get rid of the background chromosome. And let's just focus on the red squiggly line and the blue squiggly line. That's the coiled DNA. There's our chromosome. So what are chromatin? Chromatin are the long, loose, linear form that DNA will be in at certain times in the life of a cell. So the chromatid on the left, the red chromatid, can actually unravel into chromatin form. Same thing with the one on the right. The blue chromatid can unravel into the long, loose, linear form of DNA known as chromatin. Now, chromatin, this is the active form of DNA. When DNA is in chromatin form, it's fulfilling its purpose. The purpose of DNA is the A's and the T's and the C's and G's of DNA. Those are instructions that your cells will follow in order to create various proteins. So when DNA is in the chromatin form, that's when it's specifically being used by your cells to create proteins. So as we kind of wrap this up, here's our karyotype. And let's recall from earlier that humans should have a total of 46 chromosomes. But every chromosome is composed of two halves called chromatids. And every chromatid is a super condensed, tightly coiled strand of chromatin. So I hope that kind of uh, compares and contrasts what these three are. So as I've mentioned that the DNA changes form throughout the life of a cell. So in the stage of the cell cycle called interphase, this is where DNA is in its chromatin form. And this is the stage of the cycle that lasts the longest. Cells spend the majority of, of their existence in the interphase stage. And this is where they're doing their job and they're performing their function. So the chromatin needs to be in this form so it can be used to build the proteins that the cell needs to survive. But then the cell goes through mitosis, which begins as prophase. And this is where the DNA, the chromatin, coils into the movable units called chromosomes. And then in metaphase, the chromosomes are pulled to the middle of the cell. So if you're ever going to prepare a karyotype of an individual, this is where the cell needs to be in order to even see the chromosomes. Either in prophase or metaphase, this is the only time when chromosomes are visible within a cell. And these two stages, they don't last very long, so you have to time it perfectly. Well, after metaphase comes anaphase. And what's happening is that the chromatids are being separated from one another. Some of the chromatids are being pulled leftward to the cells, left side, and some of the chromatids are being pulled rightward to the, to the right side of the cell. And then as the process of dividing wraps up in telophase, the chromatids uncoil back into the loose linear version called chromatin, and then the cycle repeats itself. So this slide is really nice because I think it shows nicely the form that DNA is in as the cell goes throughout its lifetime. Okay, as I wrap this up, here's a little practice quiz that you can try to uh, check your understanding. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.